I, I think platforms are amongst the su- the most valuable ideas in terms of structuring large scale systems, and at the same time, the most difficult things to do well. Ab- uh, absolutely, as we, this is this as is, we is we kind do. of the the peak of good architecture and good engineering, really. Yeah, yeah, and then, yeah. Look at the examples we had, right? Who who yeah, wants yeah. themselves in a world without printer driver and without decent operating system? Who wants themselves back in a world without being able to provision code in the cloud and it runs serverless without much doing anything, right? So, yeah. so the power of this is very clear. But yeah, you you put yourself at the tip of that pyramid, yeah. right? And as I said, this can work well internally if you understand your domain very well. <coughs> If you have good discipline, you can make assumptions that other people cannot. You can increase productivity. You can harmonize and at the same time boost innovation, right? That's sort of the magical mix of platforms. Yeah. Yes, it can be done, but it's not going to fall in your lap yeah. is, the, is the second part of the lesson. So, so the other word that's in the, in the title of your book is strategy. So. Yes. So, 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 how, what are some of the strategies that we can adopt to do a better job of this incredibly difficult thing? Yeah, and and we we, we both used to be consultants, so we probably have a, a special relationship <laughs> to the word strategy. Yeah, I think I actually wrote in one book, and this is yeah, you know, since we're already dishing out everywhere, this was sort of an old thoughtworks kind of joke. Like whenever we had a project that. Um, could only have our our most skilled people was in a really far away location and made almost no money, then it was strategic. <laughs> so that was the way to kind of yeah. pitch, oh, but it's highly strategic. <laughs> so so I always uh, joke about this here. Yeah, strategy is one of those so those words where it's it's everywhere and nowhere, but I feel strongly that is you set out on these big endeavors, right? So the platform strategy book is the second in a series, right? We talked last time about architect elevator and cloud strategy. So these big things like I'm going to the cloud, I'm building a platform. I think you really do need a strategy. Now, the interesting thing about this is that the strategy cannot be a painting by numbers exercise, right? The books are not stack overflow where it's like, oh, I need to do this thing. Give me the five lines of code that I need to paste in. And it's now not- Gen AI will do that. Anyway, not, not so, cut and paste architecture. <laughs> no, and it's not cut and paste strategy exactly. And Gen AI will not write it for you either. Sorry. So the the books are walking a fine line, right? So the books in one way, because they can't just give you the answer. Because how does the book? How do I know what's the right answer for what you're yeah. trying to do? Right? Only you would know. So the books need to go a little bit meta, right? They need to go one level up to say. How do you make the right decisions? How do you find the right frameworks? Here's a good model. Here's a good framework to use without becoming so meta that it becomes a book for like how to be a management consultant, <laughs> right? It's like, oh, you should have good decision discipline and you should use two by two matrix. And, you know, so, so walking that line is probably the biggest challenge in writing these books to zoom out one level, explain to people how you make this decision, but then stay connected to the topic and say, no, here's a concrete decision like the floating versus sinking, right? Here's a concrete decision that is specific to platform. So, so straddling that line is probably the reason I started writing this book like two years, three years, three years ago. <laughs> and uh, now in early release on LeanPub, meaning it's sort of a Kickstarter kind of model, we're still in the early cycles where I'm still actively writing on it. That's mm-hmm. probably... Besides my procrastination, that's probably the real reason that it's not that easy to write a strategy book like that. Yeah, yeah. I, that description of um, uh, the way that you kind of position the advice is is, is probably the best description of the, the way that I write books that I've heard, <laughs> which is trying to find that that kind of meta level. It's, yeah, I call uh, it the. The, the twilight zone of architecture, right? Yeah, Everybody yeah. likes to talk about buzzwords. Everybody <laughs> likes to talk about technology, but in between is sort of this twilight zone, which is like, oh, everybody finds this very fascinating, yeah. but getting like actionable advice that doesn't fall into one or the other is actually not easy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it's taken me years to, to get my, hopefully I'm getting the balance reasonably, right? But it's taking me years to kind of finesse that. Yeah. Um, so, so th- this book's part of your architect elevator series. So, 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 
So how, is, is this a book that kind of spans the levels or is this a book that's positioned at a p particular floor on, that the elevator stops at? Hmm. So that's a good question. And my ambition is clearly, right? And that's why the series is called The Architect Elevator, right? From like the strategic penthouse to the engine room. So the book is spanning this. So for example, there will be strategic frameworks are in there. So how to chart a roadmap and how to have good decision discipline. So some of those topics are in there. Then you have the mid levels. So things like floating and sinking or fruit baskets versus fruit salads. You have these metaphors that make decision making approachable to a wide range of audience, right? But it's definitely a few floors down on the elevator. <coughs> then you will also have some specific things close to home for people who build platforms for like, hey, should I just make Terraform modules or should I make templates, right? Or should I do this in CDK, right? These are like very, very concrete things that people a few floor downs um, will have to answer. So the book goes through all these levels and then it comes back out and it goes a little bit into organizational and, and team aspects. Now, the way I, the, well, let me put it this way. The reason I'm doing this is because I do want to stretch the reader's horizon, right? This is not a quick answer kind of book, but I'm like, hey, even if you think you're more of a IT executive or business user, right? The shape of your platform and the value proposition and the fruit salads and the floating sinking, right? That is relevant to you. So I highly encourage you, <laughs> force you as much as I can as an author, I highly encourage you to concern yourself with that. But having said this also, the book will be that you don't need to read all chapters. So if you're an IT executive and you say, hey, you know, the Terraform template thing, that's maybe a little bit few floors tool down for me, I make my architects read that, right? So the connection is still there, but the ambition is in the end because I so strongly believe that you cannot run a business by remote control. You can't sit on the yeah. top and say, oh, I heard platforms are good, so please make me a platform strategy, guaranteed disaster, and vice versa, right? Where somebody says, oh, Technically, platforms must be good, so it must be good for my business, even though I don't understand the domain or I don't care. Equal disaster. So I feel so strong that the connection is needed. So that's what the books are, in fact, trying, trying to do. This clip was taken from my podcast, The Engineering Room with Dave Farley, a monthly podcast with some of the brightest minds in software engineering. You can find full episodes on all your favorite podcast platforms, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Amazon Music. Your support helps us to bring the, you these regular episodes. So please leave your positive review on your preferred podcast platform to help us to continue to grow and bring you great guests and their insights. Thank you very much for listening.